I need more land to grow crops for British income. I want this land. But I've also just gotten word that the French would also want this land. We need more ways to connect Louisiana and Canada. Hmm. How about the Ohio River Valley? Yeah, perfect. Rejoice. The British have won the 1763 war, French and Indian war. We are in deep debt because of the French and Indian war. I know, I'll tax the colonists. us for their war to get more land for us, the French and Indian War, they're taxing us on tea, coffee, indigo, and a bunch of other stuff we need. That's not right! <laughs> Taxation without representation is tyranny! We have won the war! Obviously. And now we have even more land. The colonies will love that. Hmm, about that. What, sir? Is this another brilliant idea? What? No, not about. Don't you bring up! <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. Well, as I was saying, I don't think the colonies should move into this new land, no further west than a certain point on the Application Mountains. It would be harder to get their money. Um, I mean protect them. Your Majesty, you know I'm absolutely loyal to you, but I do not think they'll like that. Why ever not? It makes me money. I mean they get to have me as a great king. Plus, they get more supplies if they stay closer to the shores. Don't forget the Indians would like that too. Oh right, them. They helped you win the war and you forgot about them? Maybe? That's besides the point. Let's take a vote. Yes. No. Yes. Ha, my order stands. Let this be known as the proclamation of 1763. I'll tell the colonies with a letter from the British Parliament. Hey, what's this? That can't be good. By the king, a proclamation. What is this? It says that we can't move past the application mountains. They wouldn't. They have! People are going to be raging. Yes, and Mary Priya was talking about moving. She won't be happy. Yes, those British have wronged us. I'll tell Miss Pruitt. Miss Pruitt! So why are you here, Elizabeth? The king, he's posted a proclamation stating that we can't move west of the Application Mountains. What? I know! And I had it all planned out, too. I know, Mrs. Pruitt. I know. Well, I don't care. I'll be moving tomorrow whether the king wants me to or not. Well, 
Goodbye, Mrs. Pruitt. Goodbye, Elizabeth. The Sugar Act was passed by Britain on 1764. It was passed after the Molasses Act was set to expire in 1764. It limited how much sugar and other goods the colonists could buy and sell. This angered the colonists and they reacted quickly after. Because of this, many groups of colonists boycotted British goods. This is when Massachusetts lawyer James Otis famously said taxation without representation is tyranny because the colonies had no say of what was passed in Parliament. Samuel Adams sent out a report at the Massachusetts Assembly and he called it a infringement on the colonists right new england ports also suffered and this act made it harder to bring in smuggled goods such as molasses tax goods from this act include certain wines coffee and cambric this act also regulated export of lumber and iron there were movements to increase colonial manufacturing the British hoped that the tax would actually be collected. This hurt the British West Indies market in molasses and sugar and the market for rum, which the colonies have been producing in quantity with a cheaper French molasses. I am King George III and I declare rule of the stump ox. Do you want me to go to the colonists? Yes. I'll take the bodies. Okay, that'll be, uh, let's see, two pounds. It was one pound yesterday. Well, guess what? Stay back now, kid. If you want to buy this, you got to pay extra. I'm done with this. Suit yourself, kid. It's just in. I've repealed the Stamp Act. It is no longer in effect. Everybody that... Okay, everybody, if they try to uh, use the Stamp Act against you, repeal. The Stamp Act was an act that was passed in 1765, and it taxed printed papers, ship papers, legal documents, licenses, Newspaper and other things. Obviously, this angered the colonists, so they would tar and feather the tax collectors. After the act was repealed in March 1766, they passed a law that stated everything will pass no matter what the colonists say. It was 1765 in Boston, where two colonists were talking about the new act the British passed. Did you hear about the new act called the Quartering Act? Yeah, it's so stupid. We're supposed to allow British soldiers into our house and you have to care for them. Glad we don't have that problem. Yeah. Nice house you guys got here. Get out! Stop throwing stuff at me. Due to the new act for the past, I now live here. There's nothing you two colonists can do about it. No! So, when's dinner? I'm hungry. Where's my room? You can live in the shack outside! I heard some people had three to four soldiers. I'm glad we only have one soldier. Yeah. Due to the new act for past, I now live here. There's nothing you guys can do about it. Can you use the same 
In the Township Act of 1767, Britain put taxes on imported goods that include tea, lead, glass, and paper. The colonists created the Non-Importation Agreement so that the colonies would not import goods from Britain. Because of Britain's Townshend Act, the colonists smuggled goods into the colonies from countries besides Britain. The British then reacted by setting up the Writs of Assistance, which allowed officers to search any ship without a warrant. Yo, come here. What, what, what happened? What's this? Look at this. This is the Townshend Act. Tax on paper, lead, tea, and glass. That's like the British. They've been putting so many taxes on us. This, this is not is fair for us. This, we gotta this pay is more ridiculous. Okay, this. Yeah, get that out of here. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, hey. Hey, uh, can I buy this stuff? Yep, sure. That'll be um, five fifty-four. What? What do you mean? Like this was this was two two bucks yet yeah, like last week. Well, like Britain, this is outrageous. Britain, what do you mean? Why? Britain set up taxes on um things like tea, sugar, and glass. What? And lead too. Why? This doesn't make any sense. No, 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 no. Oh no! I'm not. I'm paying this stuff. I'm leaving. Yo, um, hey, hey. hey. Um, can, I need to check your shit. Ah, you can't. You don't have a warrant. Uh, actually, the rest of the assistants say that I don't need a warrant to check your shit. So, uh, I need to check for some smuggled goods, maybe? Um, I, I think we're clear here. Yeah. yeah. You sure? Yeah, we're all good. Uh, what's that in your name? Uh, but Paper. I, that's one of the things that people are smuggling on this. No, it's Put your hands behind your back. Resistance. Uh, Resistance. <laughs> Alright. You're under arrest. I hate having to make all this tea for the colonies. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous how they how trap us here and just tax us <laughs> like this. Yeah, King George, he makes us pay all these taxes, and every time we go and buy something, it's like double its original price. Just double? Really? It's so much money. I feel like if we didn't have these taxes, we'd be normal people, but not anymore. Well, we wouldn't have these taxes if the, if the French and Indian War hadn't have happened. I agree. The Boston Massacre, March 5th, 1770. This is unfair. Back up, back up, I mean it. You keep taxing sugar, indigo. You need to calm down. I lost my job as a blacksmith and it's all your I fault. I didn't fire anyone, now get back. Fire, I dare you. Did you hear about the Bloody Massacre? No, what happened? Five people died in total. Really, what else happened? Did Paul Rear illustrate this picture? Yes. I hope more people won't die. The Tea Act that was passed on May 10th, 1773, states that only the colonists can only buy tea from Britain. That is what is considered a monopoly. a cereal aisle at Walmart or something and only seeing one kind of cereal. Shredded wheat with no sugar. Ba 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 ba. Imagine how horrible that would be. Life wouldn't be so good, would it? <sighs> People like variety. So do the colonists. They didn't just want British tea. The people became so mad about this act that the Sons of Liberty were involved with a famous riot known as the Boston Tea Party. The people rioted a lot. The Sons of Liberty tar and feathered British officials and tax collectors. The British forced the colonies to buy tea and they taxed the tea. That is just ridiculous. about the tea act because I was a tea merchant and I lost my job. <clears throat> we dressed up as Native Americans and dumped 9,000 pounds of tea into the Boston Harbor. Yeah!
the members of the Sons of Liberty was caught and imprisoned. Miracle! <laughs> Sons of Liberty just dumped an entire shipment of tea into the Boston Harbor. And make them pay for what they have done! Sir, sir, sir! The British have passed a new act! It's called the Coercive Act, and it's absolutely intolerable. You're right, this is intolerable. Come in. Your Majesty, have you decided what punishment is to be laid upon those horrible colonists of Boston yet? As punishment for the Boston Tea Party, I have made a new service. I call them... The Coercive Acts of 1774. These acts consist of four parts that will make those colonists learn their lesson. The first of which will close the port of Boston until the tea is paid for, which will be a while. The second part makes all the trials occur in England. If a colonist commits a crime, they will be tried in England to ensure that the trial is fair, for if they were tried in the colonies, it would be biased. Take that, Boston. And the uh, third one is that all town meetings shall be abolished. These meetings were the root of the cause of the Boston Tea Party. If we get rid of them, there'll be no more. Oh, Your Majesty, those rotten colonists should have invited us to the party, don't you think? Correction. Me! Is something wrong? N no, everything's okay. That's what I thought. The fourth part will strengthen an existing act. One of my favorites. One that lets uh, soldiers demand to be housed in the Connors' homes. The quartering. It will strengthen that. If this does not work, I don't know what to mean. Did I ask for your opinion? Anyway, I wonder what commotion is going on in the colonies in response to these deviant acts. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Um, are you sure? Yeah. Wait. You were there at the tea party? Yeah. Shh, we should be quiet. We mustn't tell it. Hello, I have the right to search your house. Yeah, that happened a while ago, we know that. What? That you have the right to search our house. What else? Get away, you Did lobster bat. Yeah. We didn't do anything. Do you want me to shoot you? No. What do you want from us? Just maybe seeing you. Yeah. Okay. It was one of you. Wait, you're seeing me. It was one of you. Uh, I, I, it, it wasn't us. I don't even know how that got there. I guess I have to take this. Come on. No. It's fine. It was me. Oh, really? You filthy swine. I guess I'm gonna take you to court in Britain. Wait. Not in the colonies? Yes. Not in the colonies. It's too biased. You're just gonna get free. But it won't be biased. Is that another part of this, this rubbish, intolerable acts? Coercive acts, you mean? Now, come on. We gotta take you. Your Honor, I found these feathers at the suspect's house. Hmm. My verdict? Guilty! Come on, you're coming with me. If it weren't for these intolerable acts, I would have gotten a fair trial. 
Come in. Hello. I was wondering if Cards was still up tonight, but it seems you're making dinner for an army. Oh, uh, well, almost part of it. The rest of it's next door. Who are these people? These are the soldiers. They, they, they are staying the night. Or the year. Depends. You didn't tell me about this. We, why Why would we let them? You know the quartering act, buddy? Yeah. The quartering act is kind of enforced that. It would be what? great if you went and got me a water. Yeah, me too. No. Water. Fine. One of the most impactful elements of the coercive acts of 1774 was the closing of the Boston Harbor. To the colonies in Britain, Boston was the center of the world. Closing the port until tea was paid for, which was very difficult and never was completed, made it almost impossible for the citizens to thrive. The economic system the Hague created was focused around the making of boats and other forms of trade around the port. Closing it was extremely threatening to their economic structure. The Britain punished the residents of Boston of the utmost because it had been the source of the scheming for the Boston Tea Party. They wanted to punish them because of their reason, reaction to the Tea Act of 1773. Says saw the party to be the most nasty of all the responses, including tarring and feathering the officials, demanding repeal, and many more. With Boston losing all connections to resources, colonists were forced to smuggle goods into the city, helping out their fellow citizens. The act was meant more as setting a line than anything else. Most of the other acts were meant to get money from the colonists to pay for the French and Indian War. But this one was meant to strengthen the hold on what would soon be America. When picturing the course of acts, I like to think of an Oreo. All the acts and colonists' responses are pulling the cookies away from each other. The course of acts, or the intolerable acts, as the colonists call them, were meant to strengthen the control Britain had on the colonies, and, or in our example, push the cookie back together. But instead, it backfired, causing the colonies and the Britain's relationship to worsen, and the cookie to crumble. Sorry, uh, sir, I go to a friend's house, he's over there, he sells stuff for the market. Oh, sorry, sorry. The quartering acts and all, you know. Yeah, I got you, you Father, father! What is it, son? Where are you going? I have to go get bread. But why? I just opened up your new loaf. Fine, we're going to the first continental conference. But why is it so important? It's, it's run by Samuel, uh... Adams and a bunch of other really important people. There we're going to start governing ourselves and deciding how we do it. Imagine not having soldiers in our home and being free. Well, how long will you be gone? I'll be gone for three weeks. It takes a lot of time. It'll be very, very specific. We need to know exactly what we're going to say to the British in response to these stupid, intolerable acts. Okay, I'll be brave. Okay, be ready for me, son. John walked through his door and opened his door to see there was a letter at his doorstep. Where did this go? We summon you to attend the First Continental Congress. All are welcome except the British. All delegates are welcome for the first meeting of the 13 colonies from George Washington. Oh, I really should get going. His wife hands him a letter. There's a letter from you, dear. Who's it from? George Washington. Dear Mike, we summoned you to attend the First Continental Congress. All are welcome except for the, the British. All delegates are welcome for the first meeting of the 13 colonies from George Washington. I really hope they will be able to come. I don't know where to hear a knock on the door. Hello, I am John from New York. Hello. My name is Mike and I'm from Virginia. We got your letter. Okay. 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 King George sat on his throne thinking of what he should do next. 
should I send more soldiers down there? Should I give more troops to capture the men on my most wanted list? Sir, I have a message for you. Read it out loud. Dear King George, we dislike your acts to increase taxes, nor do we like soldiers in our homes. Please accept our peace letter because it's your fault. The First Continental Congress. Don't kill the messenger. This means war. If I see one lantern, the British are coming by land. If I see two lanterns, the British are coming by sea. I see two lanterns, the British are coming by sea. Send all soldiers to Lexington, staff. Yes, sir! Lexington? Hasn't everyone? I haven't heard. April 19, 1775 will be remembered forever as known as the shot heard around the world. It is a small fight, but it will have a huge impact on the world. I'm sure of it. What even happened? A small group of militiamen had tried to stop 700 soldiers from getting to Concord. Unfortunately, the colonists were forced to Concord. Why were the regulars going to Concord? They got word that we had an extra supply of weapons and tried to raid it. They also tried to capture Sam Adams and John Hancock. Once they got to Concord, they found no weapons and headed back to Boston. Did that end the fighting? We surprise attacked them. We actually won, thanks goodness. I don't think the war will end there. Why do you say that? I have a feeling that the shot put around the world will start more violence. <laughs> 